Pastor Nona. It is a, an, an honor for us to be able to host a PMA event. Always, lagi yun na, uh, lagi namin uh, no, honor yun na uh, to, uh, no, to uh, host any activity. You're always welcome here. And, and we want to formally welcome you to every nation. And uh, this is, uh, you know, this is a blessing from God. And we would like to share with the body of Christ as well. And uh, every nation is, actually, Victory, Victory in the Philippines is part of every nation family of churches and, and uh, ministries worldwide. Okay? I'm... Uh, when I heard about this, I'm excited to hear from everybody, but Pastor Nono is kind enough to say, just give, I'll give you 10 minutes to share, and uh, so this is it. Okay, so I would like to share with you some of the, our best practices, very quickly lang. This is our Every Nation mission to honor God by establishing Christ-centered, spirit-empowered, socially responsible churches and campus ministries in every nation. So we, uh, when we started the uh, victory here in the Philippines in 1984, Pastor Steve uh, and the rest of the 60 Americans went here, uh, initiated by a Filipino and Ilocano from the, from the States and rallied the people and led by Pastor Rice Books in 1984 and they started in the campuses. So they reached out to the young people which is uh, actually they were um, they, some, some ministry are, are laughing you know, about their ministry because it's, there's no money among, young, among the students they said. no. But this is the trust that God has given us from the very beginning and now until uh, from that time until now, and until Jesus returns, we will, anywhere we go in different nations of the world, we will go straight to the campuses and really reach out to the young people. This is our uh, battle cry, reach every nation in our generation. We have three crown jewels. Uh, we call them church planting, campus ministry, and world missions. I don't know if you've heard about every nation campus. That is our campus ministry arm in, in uh, campuses here in the Philippines and actually worldwide. Okay, we, we want to have a brand for worldwide, no, for global. We have planted churches already. As of, now, as of this moment, we have about 100 uh, churches here in the Philippines, you know, and, um, and, and our, our, our turf, you know, with Pastor June, I, I was expecting Pastor June to be the one sharing this, but he's, he, um, uh, we are, that is our department and world missions. And from the very beginning, we are, um, Pastor Steve and the and the rest of the pastors have already instilled into our hearts, you know, the Great Commission. Talagang from the very beginning, sabi, sinasabi niya lagi, you are now a mission field in the 80s, di ba? Ang dami mong mga missionaries. You are a mission field, but someday you'll be a mission force. And they keep on saying, you know, if you want to obey God, you read the Bible. If you want to, if you want to know God, you read the Bible. If you want to obey God, you get a passport. So, when we, we were still students during that time, so we don't have money, how can we get a pass, even a passport? But, we keep on hearing it, so we believed it, and it came to pass. So now, I believe that, uh, you know, I'll share with you why uh, uh, we're, we are actually uh, focusing our efforts to Asia. And this is actually a snapshot of Asia. This is not actually updated because I just heard it, the presentation today. So this is 2016. Uh, we, are in, we included Oceania region. It's not Asia, but we included that because of our connections. And then we are in Middle East, also in Central Asia. So these are the nations that we have. And then uh, before 2013, in 2012, Pastor June, um, Dr. June Escosar, if you know him, you know he's really like a, you know, a go-go guy. You know? and, and he's setting us up, and he, we planned out the rest of Asia. And by 20, if we plan three, in three nations every year, okay, this is 2012 when we are planning this, we map out the rest of Asia and and we will be finished by 2020. But if you'll notice, in 2015, Fiji and Papua New Guinea is Oceania, so it's not Asia. And then because of our connection, we have Egypt and Madagascar, we put it in 2020. So these are not written in stones, we just put it there, you know, just random, we prayed about it. And then the Lord, you know, by, by His grace and through prayer and, you know, people giving and, and people uh, answering the call of God, we have actually, up until this part, we have already people and we have already landed and scouted the land in these nations by the grace of God and through prayer. And so uh, very quickly, okay, this is every nation world basis. Just very quickly, we define it. It's very important that we understand and we know what we're doing no, in, the, in every nation. And, and I just want to say that all of these best practices, you know, we, we are doing this and it's, uh, you, you're welcome to copy it if you want to, but contextualize it in your in your church, in your local church, and all of the things that we will hear from here, 
it's, we are opening it to everybody. That's why it's uh, best practices. You can, it's open for everyone. You can, you can copy it. And it's a privilege to be able to share it with the rest of the body of Christ. Every Nation World Missions, okay, we are totally committed to reaching the nations and the world's unreached. Okay, there are still a lot of unreached nations, and unreached doesn't mean unreachable. Amen? So we'll be able to uh, reach out to them and with the right strategy and with the right people and through prayer and people giving, partnering with us, it is possible. The mission is possible. And so uh, we, are, we are going, you know, there, there are three uh, things that we do, pray, give, and go. But I'll start with go. People will be able to accomplish this when we will reach the nation by going. So we have, uh, first of all, the first part of going is short term and then the other one is long term. Short term, we have a, we put a brand in our short term mission uh, program. You know, we rally people, raise support, four to six months, and then we, we will send them to the nations uh, that we are planting a church to. Okay, so we call it 10 days. And in 2015, we have about 94 teams and 738 missioners. And in 2016, so it keeps on increasing and increasing. Many people are answering the call, they're excited. We, we uh, communicate it to all the churches. We're on the same page regarding uh, short-term missions because we believe that uh, all of us can actually be a part of a short-term mission, going to the nations and answering the call through the, the Great Commission. Okay, these are the receiving nations, okay, of these 10 days. And then these are the nations here in the Philippines that are, so we, every year we communicate it to our, to our churches. So pag wala yung name nila, yung church nila dyan, they will be convicted or they will really believe God that next year we will be sending short-term mission teams as well. Okay, and then we are committed only to planting churches and raising local leaders. So we are serious about, uh, if, as you can see, the, as you saw the, the crown jewels, the campus ministry, church planting, and world missions. We will not go there unless we have people or teams that will stay. Okay, we can do scouting trips beforehand, do prayer walks, but... We will not uh, make any effort if there's nobody, not even one person, who will say, I will go to Iraq, you know, or I will prepare to go to Syria, you know, something like that. So we, because we're serious about uh, staying there and establishing a church and then reach out to local leaders. The ultimate goal is not only to send Filipino missionaries, but, you know, it may, it may take three, three years or five years or even longer, but the goal is really to disciple the lo reach, reach the locals, disciple them and train them, and then pass the baton to them. So we have our success stories like Laos, Indonesia, China, that are now being run by the locals. But praise God for that. That is the grace of God. You know, it's some of them take took a longer period of time. Some are shorter, and uh, and then the Filipinos can actually stay in still in that nation, maybe just uh, helping on the side. They're not actually the lead or the ones that are senior, senior leaders in that nation. Okay, so that is one thing that is very, very important for us to consider because Filipinos will not be there forever. And then the missionaries who are, are leaving uh, can go to another nation. They can pray for another nation that they can transfer to. And then, uh, so the local leaders will be the ones. And they are the most effective ones. Even though our missionaries can learn the language, the, they are still the most effective people who can reach their own people. Okay, every nation committed to raising teams and deploying them to strategic cities and campuses in the remaining nations of Greater Asia and Oceania. Okay, we are going straight to the capital city. Okay, to, when you go to the nation, we go to the capital and we go straight to the campuses. That's, that's like what I said. No? Um, our, our turf is really campuses. No matter how hard, you know, no matter how close these campuses are, we will pray, we will study, we'll do spiritual mapping, we'll do prayer walk just to make sure that when we go there, we will be effective in reaching out to the young people. So we will start with young people. We're not saying we're not welcoming the communities or the married or the single. Eventually, they will, they will, uh, no, they will graduate, diba? Right? And then they will get married, you know, just like what happened here in the Philippines. So the Philippines is like our model. What we're doing here, like when you say, go and make disciples of all nations, you're saying that you are impacting every sector of society. So we, go st we start with the campuses, and then later on, the business community, the commercial, you know, and the families, you know, and, and, and go on and so forth. Okay, and then so going long term, so we have also, um, 
we we are praying and we're believing that everything that we do will be local church based so we have our school of world missions this is a four month uh four month course a missionary training program which is ongoing now if you see the second floor and and that is the four months but but prerequisites are the training that we have for two years but in the evening enli one and two every nation leadership institute which is open for everybody and then the third year will be this if you believe that god has called you full time you know we have the school of world missions for you for you so these are all in 2016 graduate and for the every nation world we have only one school here in the philippines we believe that this can be a, a good training ground for them uh, and school also and also we expose them to the big churches and small churches and even ministries not, not every nation or not victory you know we go to uh, payatas you know we go to the different uh, in even uh, mga mmda so they know every everything that is going on in different aspects then we are committed to holding the ropes for all our missionaries through prayer, financial support, missionary care, coaching, and strategic consultations. How many of you are glad with this? Okay, we don't just send them and then just bala na kayo, you know. We are believe, we are visiting them, you know, may pastoral visit. We make sure that that uh, when we visit, we take care of, you know, we ask them about their marriage, about their parenting. Siyempre, you don't want their children na parang they, they hate the ministry, their wives are getting crazy. So we want to also take care of the family and the pastor. And then support, okay? We have people supporting from our church as well. Okay, they raise their support, the missionaries, but they also like the, the church, like 10% of their goal will be coming from the church, from missions department. And then the rest of the 90, they will raise it on their own. But once in a while, we go there and share and there's, there's any emergencies. Uh, also, there are uh, health health. Uh, health care, you know, something like that, so we support them as well. But of course, prayer, no? Kanina, I think uh, what, what I want to emphasize when we had a devotion, prayer is very, very important. All these people, all the missionaries that we have, you know, they're all answers to our prayer. Some of them took them like five years, six years, it doesn't matter, as long as they believe that God has called them to go into these nations. Kasi yung mga nations na to, hindi siya joke. Okay, these are Middle East nations, creative access nations. So, you really need to have a call from God when you go to this nation. So, ang pinaka-best na ano namin is, okay, I'll just continue on. Okay, prayer is very important. Now, this is uh, William Carey. He said even before he went to the, he went to the, uh, to the mission field, no? Sinabi niya, okay, I will go. But I will go down into the dark pit if you promise to hold the ropes for me. So, he saw the importance. So, he, this was even before his ministry. Okay, and the father of modern measure, okay? And uh, you see his success. He's very successful because he believes in prayer. And prayer is very, very important. Okay, we have every first Tuesdays of the month, we have a prayer for the nation, 7 a.m. to 8.30, okay? And we, we serve breakfast. People come here to pray for the nation. So in the, in the room, they will only see flags, globe, maps, pictures of our missionaries, and all their prayer requests. And then once in a while, we ask them, we ask the missionaries to come, and then we pray for them, and we ask them to challenge people to even continue to pray. So we want to make sure that all of our churches are on the same page with us regarding missions. Giving, okay, we have, all of these things are possible because of our partners. And we rally on top of the tithes and offering of our people, we rally them to give a pledge, missions pledge. We call it World uh, Every Nation Partnership. Okay, so people are generously giving. Aside from, some of them are also supporting the missionaries, okay, personally. But also, they are also giving in the, in the fund, no? And these are all the, for the church planting and, and the visits and the strategic consultation. Pastor June is the one going to the campus, to the nations, making sure that our churches will not stay like 50 people or 100. So they will go st uh, strategic planning every year to make sure that they are growing as well. So not, not really stagnant. And then maybe break the missional code, whatever it is that is very effective in their nation. The strategy in different nations are different from each other, but discipleship is still the, the central of everything. So giving, okay, from field nations to sowing nation. I remember in 1986, just two years after we were established here in the Philippines, I remember that when, when uh, Pastor Steve rallied the people to 
to give, you know, aside from tithes and offering to give. And, and we came up with uh, $200. And this is eight units of $25. With all students, huh? I remember there's only one Chinese uh, businessman, but we're able to raise $200 monthly and we gave it out to outside. You know, there's a Bible school, there's an orphanage, there's a, a ministry in, in Myanmar, in Bangladesh. So because uh, Pastor Steve is uh, encouraging us that, that um, you know, it is, in, it is in sowing, it is in giving that we are receiving. You will be the ones that will be blessed, not, not receiving. So from the very beginning, Pastor Steve is not re uh, uh, receiving from the U.S., but not the church. The church is uh, standing on its own. And that's why from that time on until now, we, see, we saw that God has been uh, miraculously providing for us even these two buildings that we have. Because, you know, the very foundation of this building in the cornerstone or the foundation stone, Positive, keep on writing Matthew 28, 18 to 20. This building, these two buildings, is all for training missionaries to be sent out, okay, to the nations of the world. And so, um, okay, this is uh, the principle behind Romans 10, 13 to 15. Everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. How can they call the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they're sent? It is, is it written how... Beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. In 1 Samuel 30, 24, who will listen to what you say? The share of the man who stayed with the supplies is to be the same as that of him who went down to the, to the battle. All will share alike. So all the people, all the partners are excited also to give. Maybe they cannot go, but they can give. They can do their part in, in fulfilling the Great Commission as well. Okay, and then we go to different churches every time and do a mission challenge. Pray, give, and go. Those are just the three things, and I believe that this is very important. Continue to pray. People will give, and then definitely a lot of people can, can give, and then go short-term or long-term. And when I was uh, the director of 10 days and School of World Mission together, we realized that 90% of those going on a short-term mission came back and have a heart for mission, and they go to the School of World Mission. So doon ang gagaling yung mga nagpo full-time because they saw... The burden, they see it and they want to be the answer to that burden. Okay, very quickly, these are the nations that we reach. So we communicate it to the people. We go straight to, to the nation, nation's capital in Armenia, in Yerevan, in Fiji. Okay, Suva, Fiji. Okay, and then, so go, go to the campuses and then the population. So we excite them to, uh, uh, to go to these nations. And these are the teams. Uh, make sure there's a Filipino there. And then uh, Papua New Guinea, you know, 80% of the, the women here before the, they turn their age of 18, they will be raped. Okay, and I'm going there tomorrow to do the anniversary. We are in University of Papua New Guinea. The dean just recently passed away, you know. But he opened the door for us. He said, every nation is welcome. We need help to reach out to the young people. They're into drugs, they're into the alcohol. But he recently passed away. He's a Christian, but... But uh, he opened the door, 15,000 students in Port Moresby, reaching out to the locals. Okay, Kazakhstan. Okay, this is in Almaty. Okay, these are the population. Okay, uh, th those, these are the nations that are in the 2020 initiative. 20,000 in Kazakh National University. And these are our missionaries. And then in Bhutan, we just recently have uh, acquired a land that is very near Timpu University because you need to have a land for you to be uh, acknowledged as an, a Christian organization in Royal University of Bhutan, okay? And then uh, Egypt, okay, this is actually targeted in 2019, and they have about, we are targeting Cairo, 20, 12 million. We have already people who will go there. Rene also will go. <laughs> we have Cairo University, look, 250,000 students. Okay, so just imagine, just pictures and the figures, it will communicate vision, it will cast vision to the people, and they would answer the call. These are the Philippine mission. Then Jordan, and then, okay, Aman, okay, 4 million, we have already a team there right now. 9 million population in Aman, there's about 91,000 in the capital. University of Jordan, they're now, uh, in, some of them are enrolled in the, in the, in these uh, nations. And then we, this is our team. This is just last year in 2017. We have Azerbaijan. This is the team. We had scouted the land already. This Maldives. Maldives is very nice. It's like Boracay, a big Boracay, but 98% are Muslim. And 
there are a lot of churches that are closed right now and pastors deported. So the, the route there is really to, and to, uh, to be in the business. That's why I'm talking to Pastor Gani. Maybe we can, uh, and even in Cyprus, in Azerbaijan, they put up a business so that, they, that our missionaries can stay longer. So they'll do everything that, uh, that they can do, business, student, some that are studying the language, some that are putting up a business or an NGO for them to be able to stay because it's hard if you're not staying there. Lebanon, we were just there last year. That's an open door. We are missing to uh, refugees, Syrian and Iraqi refugees. And the reason why we went there and, and helped the church is because Iraq and Syria is in 2019. So we have already a lot of connections for next year because we did a, a medical mission with the, with the refugees of uh, Iraqi and Syrian refugees. This is Tajikistan church planting team. They, some of them are waiting in Kyrgyzstan right now. But uh, this July, we will be going to Tajikistan. Uzbekistan will be in August, and we have already a team as well. And lastly, these are just the verses that we're standing on, the three verses. Okay, why missions? We have a mandate from God to go and make disciples of all nations. We are empowered to be witnesses to the ends of the earth. That's why it's possible. And because Jesus purchased people from every tribe and language and people and nation. These are all just the three verses that we're standing on and believing that the mission is not impossible. It is possible and they, are, they may be unreached, but they are not unreached. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much for this time, Pastor Donald.